Hey, in this video, we're gonna look at the brand new Panasonic Lumex S1H. We're gonna go through the menu, look at all the settings, step-by-step, page-by-page, so that you know how to get started. Coming up. Okay, so whenever you're looking at your camera, you turn it on for the first time up here on the front right-hand corner. And whenever you turn it on for the first time, one thing to notice is that you actually have to press a shutter button or press a menu button or something. It doesn't just come up to, uh, to a shooting screen or menu screen um, like most cameras do. And so once you have it on, um, go ahead and hit your menu button here. This is going to take you to your first setting, which is which is your movie settings. And I wanna go over, and the first menu is exposure mode, or image quality, one. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change my exposure mode from P, which is program, and you have A, which is ap aperture priority. A, aperture priority, S, shutter, uh, shutter speed priority, and then M, which is full manual. So I want mine on M, and most filmmakers will choose that. So if you are, uh, if you're getting this for video and you're wanting to get video settings, go ahead and choose M like you would on most cameras. Um, photo style, let's see what our options are. We have standard, we have my photo style four, looks like a custom, three, two, one, different customs. V-log, uh, this is something I'll definitely want to try out. This is the um, Panasonic's log mode. Uh, which is just a super flat image that retains a lot of information in the highlights and the shadows. Uh, looks like we have a Leica 709, a Cinelike V2, Cinelike D2, L Monochrome D, L Monochrome Monochrome, Portrait, Landscape, Flat. So these are kind of your typical um, vivid, these are your typical built-in picture modes. Um, for now, I'm going to take mine. I imagine most video videographers are going to want to stay in either flat or one of these Cinelike. Cinelike D2 or Cinelike V2. I'll have to do some research on what the, difference, what the differences are in each of those or V-Log. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and set mine in V-Log because I know I want to do some testing on, the, on that uh, profile tomorrow. So go ahead and choose that. Okay, next we have our metering mode. I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And we have four different options here. So this first option is multi-metering mode. And this is, um, this is I'm reading this straight from the uh, manual. It says it's a method in which the most suitable exposure is measured by judging the allocation of brightness on the whole scene, or excuse me, on the whole screen. Uh, the next is center weighted. This method uses uh, is used to perform measuring which focuses on the center of the screen. The next is method is uh, used to measure the extremely small part around the spot metering target. And the last method, with a little asterisk down by the side, it says it's a method used to perform measuring which focuses on the highlighted parts of the screen to prevent overexposure. This is suitable for theater photography, etc. So that's kind of interesting. So depending on your style, and uh, how you like to shoot, choose the metering mode that's best for you. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and choose spot, um, and I hope that I'll probably be able to move that spot around later. Um, that's kind of how I like to shoot. All right, next, dual native ISO setting. Uh, it's automatically set to auto, and we can choose to, shoot, uh, to choose the low setting or the high setting. And so if you are going to be, uh, if you know you're gonna be in run and gun situations in low light, so if you're at a wedding reception, for example, I would probably go ahead and put this on high. Uh, if you are gonna be shooting outside at all, probably put this on low. And if you're gonna be kind of going in and out everywhere uh, and you're not sure what you're gonna need, just put it in auto and it's gonna go ahead and make those best selections for you. Uh, I'll have to do some testing on that later, but I imagine auto will probably get the job done. Uh, ISO sensitivity for video. This is going to give you the option to choose um, your what your automated ISO settings will do. So 
Uh, the low limit is going to be whatever you choose here. So you can go all the way from 640 to 25,600 for the low setting. That's kind of amazing. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, 640 right now and the upper limit setting. Um, if you wanted to cap it out, like if you do some testing and you think, well, I don't want anything above 12,800, you can choose that. Uh, I want to go ahead and leave this at auto right now. I rarely use auto ISO. Uh, very few. There are very few scenarios that that I would actually use that, but I may come back to that later if um, if we need to look at that. So I'm going to hit my back button here. Next is synchro scan, and what this is, it says it's a fine. It's to fine adjust the shutter speed to reduce flickering and horizontal stripes. Uh, the shutter speed set in synchro scan is saved separately from the shutter speed used for normal recording. In the synchro scan setting screen, you can call up the current shutter speed from normal recording to adjust it. And so that sounds like a pretty neat option. I'm gonna have to test that out later to get a better feel for exactly how that works. But I know using mirrorless cameras, uh, I often come across situations where the lights cause flickering or, or scan lines going up and down the screen. So that would be great if we could fix that. Okay, so I just went up and changed the um, mode dial from the, from the manual movie mode just to straight up manual, and it's highlighting this as an option now that I can choose. Um, and so if flicker decrease for video, it's off right now, so if I'm having flickering, I can choose one of these options it seems like, and I can hopefully decrease some of that video. That's interesting though that it uh, doesn't allow me to do that in the movie mode. I'm gonna go back there. Yeah, hmm, very interesting. Again, one of those things I'll have to come back to and figure it out. And this master pedestal level, it says in the manual that you can adjust the black level which serves as the reference for images. Uh, it is not available, however, when, I, uh, when your camera is in V-Log. So I'm going to go back up here to the picture style and sorry, change this to something else. Let's just see, let's change it to cine like and sure enough that came available. So in something other than V-Log, you can change your, you can adjust your black levels. Um, Interesting, usually you can set this individually within each of your picture modes, and so it's interesting that they have it available outside just as like a menu function. Uh, it makes sense though that it's not available in Vlog because in Vlog you want everything is that it's going to be as flat as it can be, and so your blacks are going to be really raised uh, just to uh, capture as much data as possible. Um, but if you wanted to shoot in Cinelike or Rec. 709, then you have the ability to either raise your blacks or um, to raise your blacks or let's see. There we go. Now it's changing now, so I can raise them or lower them. Okay, I want to leave it at zero for now. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave that picture style as Cine 2 as well, in case there's anything else that isn't available for Vlog. All right, so hey, that was the first page. Good job. Let's keep going. Second page, we have Image Quality 2. First is uh, SS Gain Operation. So I think that's, so this means shutter speed and gain operation. So right now it's set to seconds and IS, ISO, so I imagine that's, speed, like your shutter speed, um, you know, 1 50th of a second, 1 125th of a second, things like that, and your ISO, or you can choose to have a shutter angle instead of shutter speed, and that is going to be a little bit more in tune with what cinema cameras are used to, are used to having. Um, so uh, I will, I would definitely want to explore that. I'm not as familiar with working directly with shutter angle. I understand the, uh, the concept of it and the, you know, the math behind it and all that, but um, I may stick with shutter speed for right now. And here, I bet, it's, I bet the ISO is simply measured in decibels of gain. Um, decibels, I think that's what dB means, decibels of gain, as opposed to just, just numbers. 
Uh, let's just see what it comes up as. So yeah, so that's telling me right there that my that my gain is auto 30 dBs. Let's go back into it and I can change the shutter angle. And yep, it's telling me that my shutter angle is at 11 degrees and my ISO is at 6400. And going back in, changing it back to what you'd usually see on a mirrorless or a DSLR. Yeah, it has my shutter speed as being 250 and ISO is 6400. So that's neat. You have the option to uh, choose how you, how you see that and how you operate your camera. Uh, image quality two, second option, I dynamic range. So I think this stands for intelligent dynamic range uh, and it's off right now. Uh, I imagine that as a filmmaker and, and photographer, if you want to shoot in manual, then you probably want to leave this off. You don't want your camera picking and choosing which dynamic range or to, to limit its dynamic range if, if you don't want it to limit it. Uh, there's really no reason I could think that a professional would want to limit your dynamic range in any given situation. So I'm going to leave this off right now, and if I find anything else about that later on, I will let you all know. Vignetting compensation, um, this, this will be kind of programmed into the lenses used as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say just keep that on for right now because I bet that will come in handy and create a little uh, bit less of a post-processing work. The um, diffraction compensation, that's off. Uh, you can set it to off or auto. So I'm gonna leave it off right now. Filter settings, filter effect. Let's see, on, what does that do? Expressive, retro, okay, yeah. So these are, uh, these are, just different scenes, it seems like, different different situations that you might want to shoot in. Uh, this is going to be a more, more of a creative function. Uh, this is probably not something you will want to have on uh, if you are a professional shooting for a job. Um, if you're just playing around with the camera and in the backyard and with the kids, you may try something and kind of give it that Instagram filter app kind of look. Um, but I imagine you're going to want to, to keep these off. Uh, for most of the time. So, I'll go ahead and set that off and come back. Okay, moving on. First menu, uh, third menu, so, so we're in the movie mode. Menu, uh, the, we're in the movie menu. Third option, image format. We have here record file format. You can either choose AVCHD, MP4, or MOV. Uh, if you're working mainly with, uh, with Apple and with Mac, choose MOV. If um, you're, you're using PCs, probably MP4. Image area video, full, what are our options here? Uh, full frame, Super 35, and then pixel to pixel. And uh, it says in the manual, this records with one pixel on the sensor which is equal to one pixel of the video. Records a range corresponding to the resolution range in record quality. And so this is gonna give you the largest image that this camera can, can offer. This is gonna give you a little bit smaller of an image and this is gonna give you an even smaller uh, version of that image. Uh, it may be a bit sharper and maybe have more like a, a telescopic effect, but um, for most people, we're probably gonna live between these two things unless you just wanna do something really creative with that last option. I'm gonna leave mine in full right now. Record quality. And so this is where you have just a huge amount of issues. So let's stay here for just a few minutes. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top. Let's start with the top. So here we have 4K at 100 megabits per second at with 10 bit color, 60 frames a second. Um, this note here says right there that this is super 35. So this is gonna automatically crop in to the sensor and you're not gonna get that full frame sensor readout. However, 
I think the quality is still going to be great. I'm definitely going to do some image testing, but you're going to have 4K, 10-bit, 100 megabits per second at 60 frames uh, a second. And so uh, it's going to be a really nice image, I think. Going down, we have 4K at 8-bit in 30 frames a second at 100 megabits per second. But notice that this is full frame. And so even though we lose that 10-bit um, here, we get our full frame back here. And so it can't do 4K at 60 frames a second in full frame, but it can do 4K in full frame at 30 frames a second. That's an 8-bit. It can do uh, 4K 30 frames a second in 10-bit, but if you notice the you notice the um, bit rate goes down a little bit, down to 72 megabits per second. Uh, and it notes that HLG is available, which I know is somewhat of a, a newer um, a shooting style or shooting profile included in some cameras. So uh, that may be interesting to try out just to see how much of the highlights are recoverable and to see if that's worth it to lose that uh, extra bit rate there. Moving on, 4K in 24 frames a second, 23.98. Uh, it is in 8-bit 420 uh, color, and you get your 100 megabits per second. You get your 4K 10 bits at 72 megabits per second, and that's 24 frames per, per second as well. HLG available. Here we get down into our full HD, that means 1080, um, 60 frames a second, you get your 420, 8-bit, 28 megabits per second. Full HD, 8-bit, 24 megabits per second, 24 frames per second, and then full HD at 30 frames a second, 8-bit, and 420 color. So lots of different options here to choose from. Uh, I'm really excited to start trying each of these out and, and figuring out what works best for me and what works best for, uh, for my workflow. For now, I want to leave it, I think I want to leave it right there. Uh, record quality, my list, I think this is um, just a custom made list where you can choose uh, two or three of your favorites if you want to bounce back and forth between them really quickly. Variable frame rate, that's an option that allows you to, uh, to shoot in very high frame rates, but I think it, uh, it takes away audio recording in some of those. Uh, it says we can't do it in that, so it looks like this is locked by the record quality. So let's go down to full HD and just see, no, no. Still not available. Hmm. Very interesting. So I can't access the variable frame rate on any of those right now because it's set in the current mode of record quality. But whenever I tried to change that rec record quality, uh, it didn't let me choose it. So that's interesting. Time code, this is just where you can set a time code if you're matching uh, different cameras in post. Luminance level. With the luminance level, you can set the luminance range to suit the purpose of video recording. And it gives a few examples here. When recording file format is set to AVC HD, 0 to 255 cannot be set. Uh, when the photo style is set to V-Log, uh, this is fixed to 0 to 255 and 0 to 10, 23. Uh, photo style set to like 2100 HLG, it's fixed to so. So these different lumen settings are simply going to correspond with uh, how much data you want to you want to collect. Uh, the, set the luminance range to suit the purpose of video recording. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to leave mine on uh, 0 to 1023 just to get everything. And if I do a little testing and find that one of those other options are better, we can change it later. Okay, moving on to the next menu. We're still in the movie menu under the one, two, three, four, fourth option. And here we have AF custom setting for video. Have the AF off. Um, we'll just go ahead and set it, see what our options are. AF speed and AF sensitivity. Okay, I imagine this is going to, AF speed is going to be how fast 
um, the autofocus moves once it recognizes that it needs to move. And so if you are wanting uh, your, if you're wanting your AF, oh, here we even have more options. Okay, yeah, so. Uh, so, let's go set. So here we have AF speed and AF sensitivity. If you're wanting your AF, uh, if you want your speed of your sense, if you want the, if you want your speed of your autofocus to be faster, obviously you're going to move this up all the way. It goes from negative five to, to from negative five to positive five. And if you want your AF sensitivity um, less responsive or more responsive, so. Um, the difference between these two is th sensitivity is how aware it's going to be if it needs to change its autofocus point or not. And so if it's tracking a face, let's say for a wedding, for example, it is um, tracking a face coming down for a processional like a bridesmaid or a bride then I want this to be pretty sensitive. And so every single meter or every single foot or every single inch that it can recognize it needs to change, it's going to be sensitive to that. The, I wanna go ahead and put that probably about plus one for me. Um, go back in here. The AF speed is once it recognizes that it needs to adjust how quickly it's going to do that. Sorry. So if you want it to be really snappy and just keep locked on, then have it at plus five. If you want it to be a bit sluggish, if you want to do more creative work and maybe want more of that rack focus feel, then maybe somewhere down toward negative five or negative three might be good for you. Uh, I'm gonna do some extensive testing on the auto focusing in this camera. And so I'll come back to that in a later video and let you know what I find is the best setting for, uh, for wedding videography and for my workflow and then what I might suggest for other people. So let's keep that kind of neutral for right now. Continue autofocus. Uh, mode one, continuous autofocus only works while recording video. Continuous autofocus works all the time. So if you want continuous autofocus when you are shooting pictures as well, leave it on mode two. If you want autofocus off completely, use it to off. Um, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't want it on if I was taking pictures. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and have, have it in mode two uh, for right now. Uh, AF assist light. So this is a little light that comes on on the front of your camera if uh, it needs just a little bit more light to focus on something, mainly when taking pictures. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this an off just because um, I rarely take pictures when very, very rarely, like I've taken pictures maybe once or twice for bride, like after the photographer left and there was a special moment with a grandmother or something like that. But regardless, um, I, I don't want that light coming up just because it's distracting. So I'm gonna leave it off. Focus peaking, uh, when you're in manual focus, this are, these are kind of the, the red or the, the white outlines that kind of pop up around your subjects to let you know if they're in focus or not. Uh, I want to leave that, uh, see, we can probably set the color right here. Yeah, so focus, focus, bleh. so focus peak and sensitivity. You can turn that up to two, plus two or negative two. And display color, you can have, oh, this is nice. So you have lots of different colors. So depending on what kind of scene you're in, you may want to choose uh, different colors for this. Um, a blue is pretty good because there are that's why we have blue screens and green screens the blue and and green are, are less um, popular colors when it comes to clothing and so uh, that might be easier to pop out uh, some people prefer red uh, red sometimes kind of messes with my eyes and it makes the image seems a little blurry so i'm not sure i may keep it at this kind of light blue for now that seems nice and display while an autofocus single. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and say no. And come back. Last option here. Uh, one area AF moving speed, fast. And so fast, normal, 
Uh, let's see what this is. And so I'm not 100% sure on what this does, but I have a feeling it either is the movement speed of your of your AF indicator whenever you're moving it with your joystick or whenever you're moving it with your with your finger with the touch interface. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I'll do some testing on that and let you know. Okay, this is gonna be movie and then audio. So this is the audio menu one. Uh, sound record level display. Yes, absolutely. We want to display that recording level. Uh, mute sound input uh, off. Uh, if you're ever in a situation where you just you don't want to record any audio whatsoever then um, Then you can mute sound input Yeah, I don't I don't see any reason you would want to do that you you always want scratch audio if at all possible So I'll probably keep that off right there Sound record gain level standard low Let's do standard standard gain Sound record level adjustment in decibels. So here we have our adjusting. So it's getting quieter, 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 quieter. And now it's getting louder and louder and louder and louder and louder. And now you can see it's it's clipping out a little bit uh, right there. So uh, just I'm going to leave mine at zero. And this needs to be set for each situation you're in. So that's probably the thing you're going to be changing most, especially if you're doing wedding filmmaking this year. Uh, your audio capture adjustment. Uh, hopefully there's some sort of quick menu. I can assign that too because I'm, I'm constantly changing that throughout my day. And then the sound record level limiter. This will be nice on so that's going to help help it from clipping so much even if it is a little a little loud. Wind noise cancel canceller standard. Uh, if you're outside then you may want to go ahead and put this on high. Uh, it may kind of make your sound come out a little muffled though if you don't need it so I'm gonna leave it on standard for right now uh, usually usually the software in here does a pretty good job so unless you feel like it's really messing up your audio I would just leave that on standard your mic socket that is a mic socket works as a mic input power is supplied to an external mic by the camera okay, so you have your different options here mic input and the mic uh, works as mic input power is not supplied and then a line so a few different options there uh, my all of my mics have their own power so I'm going to leave that right there and our audio 2 menu we have XLR mic adapter setting. Uh, we don't have an XLR adapter on here, so that's grayed out. And sound, gotcha. Sound output. Okay, so sound output, you can either do uh, real time, which is if you want, if you're monitoring the sound, if you're just gonna be recording it to, to the video and not monitoring it, uh, this is the best option there. And headphone volume, if you have headphones in, you can change the volume, there you go next menu and then we're about done with the movie menu all right here we have silent mode uh, for video so that's interesting hmm. I'm not sure if this is just like beeps or indicator noises uh, let's check I don't know exactly what that means if it's just turning off indicators or if it's actual like a shooting mode but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on for right now. And then I may play around with that later just to double check. Image stabilizer, operation mode. And so here you can have handheld, normal camera shake is corrected for up, down, left, right, and rotational movements. Panning camera shake is corrected for up, down, left, right movements, detects panning directions automatically. And so if you had it on a tripod, but you were still gonna be doing lots of panning or tilting movements, that would be your option for you. And then off, if you just want it off completely, uh, I wanna leave this on. And so electronic stabilization for video. This is, I feel like it's gonna be even like an, an electronic, hmm, like a software-based stabilization for video as opposed to stabilizing the actual sensor inside and then boost 
image stabilization. I guess this is going to give you even more image stabilization and then anamorphic video. This gives you different uh, shake image stabilization options for each anamorphic option that you might be using. Uh, I don't have any anamorphic lenses, so I'm going to keep that off. I'll do some more testing on stabilization and I'll let you know exactly what these two options do here. But for now, I'm just going to leave those on to get the most stabilization out of it. And then focus transition. Here, we talked about the autofocusing earlier. Start, that's interesting. Focus pull setting. Set. So it looks like these are our preset focus transitions that you can make. Focus transition speed, super high, high, medium, low, super low. Focus transition, record. And so if you want to record your focus transition, and focus transition weight. If you want it to wait a certain amount of time, then you can do that. I feel like we're getting into a lot of the cinema camera features here that usual DSLR mirrorless cameras um, do not have because I am not familiar with all these, but they definitely seem like um, it's much more sophisticated than what I'm used to working with. So I am excited about growing into these features. So here it says the segmented file recording uh, to avoid video loss due to unforeseen interruptions to the power supply recorded video is divided every minute while MOV video is being recorded. Uh, the, the divided videos are saved as one group image. Okay. And loop recording video it's right next to it, it says uh, even when recording uses up the cards free space the camera continues the recording by deleting the oldest segment of the recorded data. Okay, so that's interesting to know. So if you are, are doing professional work, you want this off because you never want your camera deleting something and you not knowing about it. So if you have loop recording on, that means that it's going if you want to keep recording it's going to start deleting if your if your sd card gets full it's going to start deleting old files um, the oldest file on your card to make room for those new files that it's recording uh, you don't want it to do that so keep this off um, and if for some reason you're just out getting random footage and you're just hanging out with buddies or, or whatever which i don't know why you would bring this camera to but you may keep that on if something really great happens and you want to make plenty of room for it, but I would say most people will keep that off. Uh, and yeah, this segmented file recording, it said it, it segmented it for every minute. And then live cropping, let's see what that is. Okay, so live cropping, it says by cropping a part of the image from the image displayed in the view, it is possible to record full HD video that incorporates panning and zooming with the camera staying in a fixed position. So live cropping, it is essentially letting you in camera what you let you do in camera what you would usually do in post and like a 6K or, 4K or a 4K image. So if you have a big scene and over the course of 20 seconds, I don't know, that's so funny, it gives you the option for the, the amount of time, but over the course of 20 seconds, if you want to, so you have a big, a big scene here and you want to move from this quadrant of the scene to the end over here and you want to go to this quadrant of the screen and you even want to like zoom in a little bit, then you can you can do all of that instantly without having to move your without having to move your camera, without having to move your tripod. It's going to do it all in camera for you, which is super neat. And I could see like for news stations or something that do that kind of move a lot, or for documentary work, uh, that's going to save you a ton of time in post. So that's really awesome. Uh, however, you know it doesn't take that long to do it in post, and if you do it in camera, then you kind of lose the option to not have that scene. So 
probably wouldn't, I won't be doing a lot of that, but uh, yeah, it's there. It's there if you need it, which is really cool. Timestamp recording, yeah, just records your timestamp. All right, and then we're back at the top. So hey, that was the first menu, great job. And here is the settings menu, image quality, photo style settings, show hide photo style. So, so we already went through these, but this is just another menu for them. Um, and this is just like turning on or off all of these different styles. So if you had one that you just know you're never going to use, um, you could go ahead and just turn it off here. So it's not even an option. Um, maybe like some of those more creative styles that are more of like, you know, Instagram filters. I may turn those off later, but, uh, but yeah, my photo style settings. This is where you can add effects. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, don't want to do any of that just yet. And then reset. ISO increments. Okay. See that every third step. Extended ISO. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say yes, just so I I have the option to if I need to. Exposure offset adjustment. Uh, this is just some metering options. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave all those at zero because I, I don't mess with the metering that much. I just need to know about what it is and and make sure I'm not overexposed or underexposed. Color space sRGB. Um, you can choose between that and Adobe RGB. I'm going to keep it at S for right now. Exposure compensation reset. You can reset that there. Auto exposure in all of those modes. Hmm, yeah, I, I never want auto exposure. Okay, so in this menu, it's the focus shutter menu. And most of these are dealing with photography. And since I'm not a photographer, I'm not gonna take the time to go through each of these, but you can see uh, if you are a photographer and these are settings that are familiar to you, you can see the different options you have here. It looks like it's very sophisticated, very, um, very exhaustive for how you can really fine tune your system to, to be what you need it to be. Okay, next is the operations menu, quick menu settings. Uh, here, it looks like you have some customization options and touch settings. You want your touch screen on, touch tab off, touch AF, uh, autofocus, touch pad AF. So I think I want to keep that all as it is right now. Lock lever setting, I don't want to change that. Function button menu, I'll probably come back later and, um, and change all of these to be really customized for what I need. I'll make another video on that. White balance ISO uh, exposure button after pressing two. It's interesting. No. Oh. After pressing the button, the setting can be changed. Press the button again to change the settings values. Display setting. Yeah, I'm not going to change any of this. Joystick setting. You can change that. Illuminated button on the top. Yeah, all that looks good. Here you're getting into more of your, more of your, um, um, your kind of on-screen help, your monitor and display. If you have a preview after each picture, if you have a histogram up, your photo grid, um, all of this stuff. Night mode, so it probably dims the screen. Uh, lots of really neat stuff. Your exposure meter, focal length, Blinking highlights, uh, if you want to really take note of your highlights. Luminance spot meter, framing outline. Gosh, there's so many options here. V-Log view assist, so that's going to add a little bit of color and contrast to your V-Log just so it's easier to see what you're working with. Same thing for HLG assist. Anamorphic de-squeeze display, so that's really cool if you are working with an anamorphic lens. You can go ahead and in camera uh, de-squeeze it to have a better idea of what your framing is going to look like. Monochrome live view, uh, that's if you want to view it in black and white, if you really want to uh, 
take note of your shadows and highlights, I guess. Maybe that's a good thing to do. All kinds of different options here. Zebra pattern, lots of us use zebras. They have the option for vector scopes in here as well and waveforms. So that is just incredible. And color bars. Here you have your uh, settings for your HDMI record output. Uh, so if you plan to hook up to an external recorder, that is going to be super helpful. Fan mode it has a fan in here. These are the different options. Auto 1 switches the setting of the fan according to the temperature of the camera. Auto 2 switches the setting of the fan of the temperature of the camera. It keeps the fan off as much as possible. Uh, normal is just going to continue it operate continuously at normal speed. And then slow is going to operate continuously at slow speed. So depending on what you're doing, um, you may one of those may work better for your situation. If you're doing, if you know you're going to have a full day of shooting with long interviews, you may try to just set it at uh, continuous slow. That way, it's constantly cooling, but it's never getting too loud. Uh, if you're going to be running and gunning all day, uh, I'm going to suggest just um, it's switching it to auto two. And that way it's going to keep it off as much as possible um, to keep it quiet but not also not let, let it get too hot uh, some more options here and that was the last four our settings here we get into a lot of just the functionality uh, card formatting uh, it gives you double card slot function folder and file settings uh, all that good stuff power save mode monitor frame rate, live view frame rate, uh, monitor settings, monitor backlight, remaining battery level, status LCD, eye sensor. Um, you can pretty much go in and change everything about this. Headphone volume, Wi-Fi, continue Wi-Fi on and off. Hopefully it's better than Sony's. Bluetooth, USB, battery info, TV connection. Uh, settings save to custom mode, load custom mode, custom mode settings. So it looks like whatever you decide to use here in your in your custom mode settings, you can actually save that. You can save different ones. So if you have different setups for different situations, if you have if you're going to be in, doing photography one day, you want to set your camera up a certain way, save that mode. If you want to um, set it up for video, save that mode, you can switch in between those, which is really cool. Basic setting function, clock set, time zone, system frequency, um, pixel refresh, sensor cleaning, language, firmware. So this is running 1.0. Since it's day one, online manual. Well, that's really cool. It can give you a QR or a URL display to get to the manual if you need it. All right. And these are your custom menu pages, which is so cool. And then your playback menu. All sorts of different options here. Um, Time-lapse video option, that's neat. Stop motion video. And that is it. That is all of the Panasonic S1H menu. And wow, that is a lot. So it's obvious that this is an incredible camera and you are gonna have no um, no shortage of options, I think, for customizing this thing exactly how you want it. Well, I hope all of that was helpful. I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully it'll help you save a few minutes on your first setup to get you out and shooting uh, quicker. And uh, hey, if you like this video and you did find it helpful, go ahead and subscribe, hit the notification bell, because I'll have a lot more videos coming out about this camera and more like it in the near future, hopefully. Thanks so much. Have a great day.